to be or not to be a polynomial. The key here is that the exponents have to be positive integers. So let's look at the examples and determine which are polynomials and which are not. In the first example, we have exponents of 4, 2, and then 7, a constant. Is there an exponent there? Well, technically we could say there is because it could be 7 times x to the 0, and anything to the 0 power is 1, but we typically don't write that. Well, 4 and 2 are positive integer exponents, therefore, yes, this first one is a polynomial. Take a look at the next one. What do you think? On the second one, that square root of x seems a little suspicious, and it should, because square root of x is the same as x to the one-half power. Well, one-half is not an integer. Therefore, this one is not a polynomial. Y equals 8. Well, that's a polynomial because 8x to the 0 again. I already kind of gave you a hint, but it's not typical for us to look at that and think of it as a polynomial. Why don't you try the next two and then come back and see how you did. All right, 5x to the negative 2. Well, a negative exponent, not a polynomial. Also, I want to point out that 8 divided by x, that one's not okay either. When you're dividing by x, it actually is 8x to the negative 1. Once again, not a positive integer. So to be a polynomial, it has to have positive integer exponents, and not to be a polynomial is if the exponents are negative or fractions. Next, multiplicity. Multiplicity is the number of times a zero appears. Okay, so multiplicity actually influences our graph of polynomials quite a bit. If the multiplicity is odd, then the graph will cross through the x-intercept. If the multiplicity is even, then the graph will actually bounce off the x-axis at that x-intercept. How weird is that? Let's practice. y equals negative 6 25ths times x minus 4 times x plus 1 cubed. Okay, let's see what we know about this polynomial. We want to find the x-intercepts, state the multiplicity, and what's going to happen because of that multiplicity. Okay, x-intercepts. Well, I can just use zero product property and get one of my x-intercepts is 4, 0. That one has just an exponent of 1, so we know its multiplicity is 1. 4, 0 only occurs one time. So therefore, I'm going to cross at 4, 0 because my multiplicity is odd. Okay, x plus 1 cubed. Whoa x plus 1 cubed, that really means that x plus 1 happens three times. So I'm going to have this 0, x equals negative 1, so an x-intercept of negative 1, 0, but it's going to occur three times, so its multiplicity is 3. Hmm, so I can kind of use the exponent to tell me what the multiplicity was. So negative 1, 0 has a multiplicity of 3, also odd, so I can say it crosses there as well. So highest order term, let's go ahead and multiply those first pieces to figure out what the highest order term is here. Well, I know that negative 6 25ths is getting multiplied by this whole polynomial, so that's for sure going to be part of my highest order term, negative 6 25ths times. Okay, then next I have an x, so that's going to get multiplied by my highest order term if I were to multiply this whole thing out. And then I also have an x in this x plus 1, but that x is being cubed. So I'm actually multiplying by x again three more times, or I could just write it as multiplying by x cubed. So that comes out to be negative 6 25ths x to the fourth power. So if I were to really multiply out that big polynomial, my highest order term would end up being negative 6 25ths x to the fourth. Remember, this term tells me so much. It can right away tell me that my degree is 4, so I know that this is a quartic. And I can also determine my end behavior, right? Well, the sign of my highest order term is negative. So I know my end behavior is headed down towards negative infinity. Okay, and then where did I start? Well, my degree is even, so even, same, so down. My end behavior is negative infinity, negative infinity. Down, down. Y-intercept, no matter which form, I can just plug in zero for x to find it. When I plug in zero, I do the parentheses first, then I'm multiplying everything out to get zero, negative 24 25ths. Remember, this is an intercept, so I'm not going to write y equals negative 24 25ths. I'm going to write it as a coordinate. Looking at this next one, see if you can find the x-intercepts multiplicities in their behavior without me. Whoa. 
Let's see how you did. Negative three zeros, one of my x-intercept, multiplicity two and a bounce, no problem, right? Four zero, multiplicity one, cross, also no problem. But wait, did you forget that two x squared? If I set two x squared equal to zero and solve, I get x equals zero. So zero, zero is also an x-intercept, multiplicity of two because it was being squared, so I have a bounce there. Remember, if the multiplicity is even, we bounce. If it's odd, we cross. Okay, highest order term, let's multiply. 2x squared times x times x squared. So we get 2x to the fifth. Awesome, that means I've got a quintic here because I got a degree of five. What's my end behavior? See if you can beat me to it. End behavior, negative infinity, infinity, down, up, down, up. Now when I go find the y-intercept, of course I plug in zero for x, but what happens? I end up multiplying everything by zero right out in the front, right there. So I already know it's gonna end up being zero. So y-intercept is zero, zero. Makes sense because I had an x-intercept at zero, zero. Extrema, what are we talking about? Well, we're just talking about mins and maxes, and we did a lot of that with quadratics. Remember our parent function, y equals x squared, and we had a min, and then if it was reflected, then we had a max. Well, that's all we're talking about, but now we have polynomials, so there can be multiple mins and maxes. Well, relative mins and maxes. If I have a relative or a local minimum, that means that I've zoomed in and I'm only looking at the one little part of the graph, and it happens to have the smallest y value in that near vicinity, so in that close neighborhood. And if I have a relative max, it happens to be the largest y value in that small, small neighborhood. In the graph, you can see that we have two relative mins and one relative max. But now let's talk about an absolute min or max. An absolute min or max might be called a global. What happens is, in the graph, we see that we happen to have a floor. What I mean by that is nothing goes below this value. So not only is that a relative min, it happens to be the absolute min. It's the smallest y value of the whole function and it's the smallest y value in the nearest vicinity. Be sure and include it in both lists for relative and absolute. Now a function may or may not have an absolute. So think about that absolute. Is there a ceiling? Is there a floor? Or is it like Saturday Night Fever and it crashes through? The function graphed in A has two relative maxes and one relative min. Let's remember how we say that, just like we did with quadratics. As I look at that relative min, it doesn't go through an exact point, so I'm just going to estimate. I'm going to say we have a relative min of negative one-third at about x equals negative one-half. We have a relative max of about eight at approximately negative 3.5 for the x. Then we have a relative max of about, mm, I don't know, 4.2 at about x equals two. Let's talk about that absolute. Is there a ceiling? Is there a floor? Looks like there's a ceiling. So that means we have an absolute max of eight. Almost there, sign of the leading coefficient. Well, that's the end of the story. Looks like it's down. So we know it has to be a negative. Is the degree even or odd? Let's see, it starts down, that's the same, therefore the degree is even. Last, how many real zeros are there? One, two, three, four. Be really careful looking at that. How many times does the graph cross the x-axis? That's the number of real zeros. Looking at this next graph, I've labeled my points first because I really had to look close and approximate. So which ones are relative mins? Well, this guy and this guy. So I have one relative min of negative 1.8 about at x approximately equal to negative 0.6. Then I have a second relative min right here of negative 0.8 at x approximately equal to 1.8. Ooh, okay, well what about my relative maxes then? So I have two again, one here and one here, one relative max of nine at x equals negative two, and one relative max of 2.8 at x approximately 0 0.9. Remember, our min or max value is the y value at the x coordinate. Now, are any of them absolute mins or maxes? Do I have a ceiling? 
Do I have a floor? Do I? No, look, I break through the ceiling. And I also break through the floor. So I'm gonna specify none. Don't leave it blank like you don't know. Tell me, you know there are none. Okay, sign of the leading coefficient. So that's determined by my end behavior. So look at this, my end of my graph is headed up in the positive direction. So I know I have a positive leading coefficient. Now for the degree, how does the graph start? It's headed down. So, okay, I've got a down up. So they're opposite, so my degree is gonna be odd. Hmm, I wonder if I could make a guess at the possible degree. We'll do that in a second. Number of real zeros. Let's count. I've got one, I got two, I got three, I got four, I got five. Five real zeros. All right, so what could my possible degree be? Hmm, I'm gonna use my turning points this time. I turn one, two, three, four times, so I would at least have to be a quintic, because the turning points are one less than my degree. Pause. Try the next two. <laughs> On this graph, we had the points labeled, but it was, still wasn't nice points. So we ended up having two relative mins and one relative max. Notice that we highlight over here, this one is not a max. If you really come at it from both directions, right? Coming from the left, it's increasing, and then coming out of that, it's still increasing. So it kind of like pauses for a moment, but in the near vicinity, it is not the max on both sides, nor is it the min on both sides. So we don't label that one. It's kind of known as a plateau point. We do have an absolute min on this. This one has a floor an absolute min of about negative 12.876. The sign of the leading coefficient is positive because it ends up. And we noticed that the story started the same up. So if it's an up, up, it has to be an even degree polynomial. Last, we have three real zeros. What possible degree could this be? Based off of turning points, it would be at least a quartic. But remember we have that weird little squiggle in there? I have a feeling it's more than a quartic. It would have to be even, so it might be a sixth degree. Check your answers on D, and don't worry if you approximate it slightly different than we did.